So picking up from where we left off, um, I've I've got some very like uh, popular but um, food as uh, psychoactive food as medicine uh, plants, but which would uh, which a lot of people would not ordinarily recognise if you just saw the raw the raw product and not the end product. Um, for example, this these beans are from a South American tree, which is. Um, which is actually the one of the most widely used, widely consumed psychoactive plant foods in the world. Um, these beans were so venerated in South America by the Aztecs and the Mayan that they were considered um, foods of the gods, and also traded as, as um, they were like um, a sort of a currency. Um, these beans are from the basically the chocolate tree, the uh, Theobroma cacao, cacao, and. Um, they are getting um, quite popular these days as cocoa nibs, what I call cocoa nibs. So the, 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 basically the pods actually grow from directly from the trunk of the tree as well as the flowers. It's quite a magical tree um, in that way. It looks, and the, the pods are often uh, can be purple or bright red. And inside those pods are these beans which are then dried and fermented in racks. And then they are pound, uh, pounded into to get basically the co uh, cacao uh, butter uh, which is used in chocolate. And of course, on its own, it's a hot food. It's a very, very powerful hot food. And it tastes quite very bitter, of course, on its own. It's only when you mix it with, with salt and sugar in like normal, what, you would, what, what we would buy in shops now is chocolate. Um, but the actual plant, which is not that healthy, but the actual beans themselves have a, um, a vasodilatory effect and they're actually a heart food. So they actually help the heart function. They lower blood pressure and so, Chocolate in its raw form, in the cacao be, uh, bean, is actually a medicinal food. So these um, are very, very healthy to, to, to snack on as, as uh, a superfood. And very close to this is, um, and very confusingly sometimes, is because it's the, the name of the plant is very similar, is, is coca, or erythroxylum coca, or the, the bush. Uh, South American, also a Peruvian, uh, grows in Peru. Um, and in South America, um, an ordinary looking bush from which cocaine is derived. And in fact, this is the, the, the basis of um, Coca-Cola. So originally, these leaves, which contain uh, the chemical cocaine, were originally used in Coca-Cola as a flavorant and also as a, as a stimulant. Um, but what's really interesting is, and this is indicative of quite a number of the plants, is that the original traditional uses of the plant is very different to the isolated form. For example, in this case, cocaine has, has a very strong stimulant action, of course. Whereas the coca leaf, when you when you put it on your tongue and you let it um, and you chew it and you let it be in your system, is actually very grounding and relaxing. So the original traditional use, even though it gives you sustenance after you eat quite a lot, the Peruvians would use this uh, when climbing in the mountains for endurance and for extra strength. It is actually a very grounding plant. It's not very stimulating um, when you the actual essence of the plant. But when you re, when you isolate the cocaine from it, of course, it's incredibly different. It's like a different substance too. So, coca is an amazingly sacred plant, often used in traditional rituals by the Peruvians, by the Peruvian uh, shamans and medicine men. And I find and it's, it's very, very um, its essence and its spirit is very relaxing and very grounding. So that is coca, and. Um, and is a very powerful medicinal and sacred plant in, in, in traditional medicine systems in South America. Um, well, other plants that we have here, uh, which are psychoactive, is uh, rooibos tea. And rooibos tea is becoming very popular around the world, in America especially. Um, it's a feinbos plant, um, which is fermented and used as a, as a beverage, as a health tonic. But what is interesting is the flavonoids, the red pigments in the rooibos uh, bush, actually crosses the blood-brain barrier and exerts a direct relaxing effect on the nervous system. So in fact, it, it is actually a psychoactive drug. So when people are drinking rooibos tea as a normal beverage, they're actually self-medicating themselves to relax, which is a fascinating thing. And the, these red pigments, it could be, it, you can extrapolate that principle to even red grape juice, etc. All of those um, plant foods with those red pigments. And here is an amazing example of purple corn that I got from Peru, 
which is called chicha and they make it into or maize marado purple corn which they make into a beverage called chicha or even into sweets these pigments these uh, purple and red pigments actually have a relaxing effect on the nervous system and and it's an amazingly nutritious um, plant food this compared to the, the, the bland quite bland um, monoculture maize that we that we get in South Africa for example or, or most or around the world um, this is a lot more tasty they actually make uh, very tasty beverages from this and mixing it with with spices such as cinnamon um, and orange peel for example so that is a, a very good uh, example of a, of a of a food as medicine, which uh, which is a different variety, which we call heirlooms. They are actually grown traditionally and passed on from generation to generation and have specific qualities. So this has a very health invigorating kind of um, taste and, and and effects. So simple things like this, we can actually uh, simple foods like these that we can actually use to invigorate our nervous systems, relax our nervous systems. Like we said. The raw um, cacao or chocolate can be used as a heart food. Um, cocoa, which we don't find in this country, is can be very. Uh, it's very alkalizing. Also, it's actually in its raw form, as the leaves are very, very alkalizing to the to the body system, which is a very great medicine. A lot of disease comes from being over acidic and uh, too much meat, too much uh, wheat. Uh, so I say, um, in my nutritional practice: uh, meat, sweet, and wheat are the three main inflammatory kind of groups of foods you know um, so plant foods because of the chlorophyll and um, and uh, yeah because of the chlorophyll and other phytochemicals often alkalize and uh, protect the system from disease so you can see this is a very different the, the the cocoa beans are very different to the end product of chocolate that we find in the shop so we've become a bit disconnected from from the plants where the products come from um, this uh, again is the mapacho, the Indian, uh, the, the actual tobacco. So they also smoke, uh, use them as cigarettes, but more for shamanic healing. And this is another example, just like the coca and the cocaine, where we've, where consumer culture and society has, tw has distorted the actual original essence of the tobacco plant, which is very cleansing, into something which is very stimulating and very addictive. And this is a pattern that I've seen in the, with a number of sacred plants. So, so coca is a sacred plant in traditional societies as well as tobacco, but we've adulterated them and changed their properties into something very addictive, which is an interesting phenomenon. Other things that are psychoactive, a lot of incenses are psychoactive. So everything from um, frankincense in the Roman Catholic Church, it's not just a thing that to smell, smell good, it actually they've done um, tests in John Hopkins University where they've shown that frankincense is anxiolytic, which means it reduces the anxiety in the body. And why would you do that in church? Of course, because it's, it's much easier to connect with God and, in, and praying if you're relaxed. So it's actually a technology to relax the mind. The same with other incenses. This is what I have left at the moment of uh, white sage, a uh, very relaxing uh, plant used to clear space but a lot of the space clearing you could actually you could say it's it's more about relaxing and and feeling settled in your space I would even I would hypothesize uh, but it's used a lot in um, spiritual healing for that and this is an example of impepo or helichrysum species um, an African um, flower, everlasting flower, which is an everlasting family, the Helichrysum family, which is also has the same effect that relaxes the, the, the system. So diviners you burn that when they do divination or bone throwing um, to settle their minds and, and uh, settle, settle themselves so that they can connect to, to intuition. A lot of things around us, uh, even from coffee, teas then, um, this is an uh, example of the turmeric plant, and it's, it looks uh, very similar to ginger in the rhizome, but what they find is that uh, turmeric is antidepressant, so it actually helps um, uh, generate new brain cells. Um, the, um, forget the uh, neurotrophic uh, factor, the brain neurotrophic factor. So it's actually a very, very powerful um, food as medicine when you eat it raw or as a powder uh, in your organically, uh, organic spi spice in your food, not irradiated. So a lot of those spices that have been irradiated and processed and you know, have, have uh, a lot of their, chemi their beneficial chemicals um, destroyed in that process. Um, 
Yeah, another good example that um, I was introduced to, in fact, in African traditional healing when I started my training is licorice. And licorice is known around the world, even in the Ayurvedic uh, cultures, as being a tonic. And what's really interesting is when I started my initiation, you get the, basically this is a, a powdered version of the licorice, the licorice roots, um, which is a very powerful tonic on the adrenal cortex. So when you take a bit of the powder, you can say it's like a rescue remedy. I call it African rescue remedy because traditionally what you do is when you're very stressed or when you're going into an important meeting, you would, you would take a bit of the powder into the, into the mouth and then very soon you'd talk nicely. They call it Mlomom Nandi, which means sweet mouth. And what's really interesting is that the name of the traditional medicine, when you initially hear like sweet mouth, you wouldn't think anything of it or you think it's a superstitious kind of uh, you know, name. But what it actually is referring to is to the physiological effect of the medicine on the system. Because when you take the licorice, it boosts your adrenal, uh, adrenal functioning and that relaxes you. And then you literally talk nicely. You calm down and you talk nicely. And as we know with human beings, there's a thing called mirror neurons, or mirror neuroning, which, um, if there's such an adjective, um, where you would then emulate the person's mood. So this actually relaxes you, and when you talk nicely, the other person talks nicely. Therefore, it is actually, you, it actually is it's referring to the actions of the medicine, sweet mouth. And what, um, so licorice, in fact, is a very commonly used plant, but very small amounts in food. But if you use it in its raw form, it is an incredible tonic for for stress and anxiety. And um, like we looked at uh, earlier, the artemisia, the wormwood, you can prepare the wormwood into a tincture, which is a, a tincture is basically herbs with alcohol, and mixing it with other plants, which we'll get into in, 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 the, other, in the other modules on African traditional medicine. In this case, it's Leonotus or wild dacha, Leonotus leonorus, is a very powerful relaxing tonic, also just cools the system down and relaxes you um, as a schnapps, so as a as an alcohol schnapps. So you take a small amount of the 20, 25 mils, and then that serves to to cool down the liver, as they would say in um, Chinese medicine, uh, but also relaxes the system and increases digestive efficiency. So all these plants, we can learn how to use them every day in our everyday lives, just to increase our, uh, our health of our body and minds. And a final note, this is an example of a very uh, sacred plant medicine called San Pedro, a cactus, which is used in South American shamanism as a medicine that, uh, psycho-spiritual medicine, if you want to call it that, mind-body medicine, where they would use it to open up the senses, the visual and emotional centers of the brain, which would allow them to experience visions in which healing would occur. And we'll be going into those into that plant into more detail in the in the following course. So there are some examples of ordinary things and some some not so ordinary um, that are out and around us, which we can actually use to modulate our nervous system and um, and to modify how we think, feel, and act depending on what we want to think.